Here I'm going to show you the method of unit analysis and how it can be really helpful for us to carry out certain types of calculations. So let me tell you exactly what unit analysis is itself. Um, it's really just a method um, for us to be able to uh, convert between different types of measurements or rates. Um, I do want to mention that sometimes people give other names to unit analysis that might even be actually used a little bit more frequently. Um, so I'll just kind of make note of that over here. Also, uh, AKA also known as probably more commonly referred to as dimensional analysis. And sometimes people will also call this the factor label method. There we go, factor label method. Or the even the unit factor method is another name sometimes people will refer to this as. Um, it's very commonly used not only in math, but also in lots of um, science types of applications to be able to convert between different measurements and units. Um, yeah, so if I just had to summarize how unit analysis really works, it's really just multiplying a quantity by one as many times as you need to multiply by um, one to be able to perform your conversion. Um, and it works because whenever you multiply by one, you keep what you're multiplying by the same, right? That's the identity property of multiplication. So let me explain just through a really simple example and you'll get what I mean when I say we're just multiplying by one. So um, let's say that we were supposed to try to convert, um, let's say 36 inches to feet. Okay, so this is something that's a very common measurement within the United States, at least, um, in terms of converting. A lot of people will probably know this off the top of your head. Um, so the answer for this is supposed to be three feet because one foot is equivalent to 12 inches and 12 can go into 36 three times. Um, so that is the correct answer. And so the way we can do this using unit analysis is we can multiply by one. So the way this is gonna work is you wanna start off with the measurement that you um, have and not only have the uh, number, but also the label. The label is also really important for the conversions and the mathematics that we're gonna do here. So um, I'm gonna write 36 inches, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by one. And then that's gonna keep it still the same length of 36 inches. Okay, but I'm gonna actually erase the one right here. So what's actually gonna go right there where I just made a circle is gonna be the conversion factor that we need to use to go between inches and feet. So what I need to know right here is I need to know how many inches equals how many feet. Um, if that's a commonly known conversion. Um, and we do happen to know that. We do know that 12 inches is equal to one foot, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that conversion and we're gonna make a fraction out of it. So we could either make it a fraction of 12 inches divided by one foot or one foot divided by 12 inches. Um, either way, because 12 inches is the exact same length as one foot, you're dividing the same length by the same length, right? And so whenever you divide the same thing by the same thing, it's always gonna be equal to one, right? So ultimately that fraction really is worth one. So we're gonna use that fraction to be um, kind of the conversion factor that we multiply by inside of that circle. Now the thing is, is that we wanna make sure that we get units um, to cancel out through this unit analysis process. So if I am starting in inches, then what I need to make sure ha happens is that when I write this fraction, I gotta have inches on the bottom because then inches are gonna cancel each other out if I've got one on top and one on bottom. You kinda think of it like inches divided by inches are gonna cancel. So that means then I'm gonna have feet on top. And so my final answer will be then in feet. That's the only unit I'll have left. Now I need to make sure I have numbers. And so the appropriate numbers I should have is that one foot is equal to 12 inches, okay? And then the math that you wanna do is just, you're gonna multiply all the way across the top. So you can think like, you know, the 36 is over one. So then you know that you have 36 times one and 36 times one is 36. And then you've got one times 12 on bottom and one times 12 is 12. So you have 36 divided by 12, which equals three feet. And then that would give you, of course, your solution and your answer to that. Okay. So that gives you a really uh, 
introduction, right, to unit analysis just through a very simple sort of conversion. So let's see just how this kind of carries out in examples where we might have kind of multiple um, steps to go through. So this tells us to convert four cups into teaspoons. So the thing is, is that most, I don't think a lot of people necessarily know exactly the number of teaspoons exactly that goes into cups. So we might want to convert cups into something else first before we um, convert into teaspoons. So um, I will provide you with a reference for you to be able to know conversions. Um, so I'm gonna pull that up right here. So this will be kind of the document that I will um, give to you here. So the top of this has linear measures. Um, the middle section has measurements of mass, how heavy stuff is. Um, we're dealing with measures of volume right now. Um, so we wanna go to this capacity measurement section. Um, the way I've typed this sheet out is I have custom system measurements and then metric system measurements on the right hand side. Um, custom is measurements mostly used in the United States and then metric most of the other countries in the world use a metric system. And then sometimes if we wanna go between the custom and metric systems, I put some kind of common conversions there as well. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to convert a certain number of cups and we're trying to work our way towards teaspoons. Um, so what we'll probably want to know is we'll probably want to know like that one cup is eight fluid ounces and then we can break a fluid ounce into two tablespoons and then a tablespoon can finally break ourselves into teaspoons. So what we'll really want to do is we'll want to go from cups to fluid ounces and then we can go from fluid ounces to tablespoons and then once we get ourselves to tablespoons then we can go from teaspoons. So this just means we gotta do a, a series of conversions, so it'll just be more steps than we did with the um, inches to feet example that we just walked through here. All right, so let me go back to where that problem is originally posed. So um, the way this will work is we'll, we'll wanna know what those conversions are, so let me jot them down. So we knew that one cup was equal to eight fluid ounces, and then um, one fluid ounce is equal to two tablespoons, and one tablespoon is equal to three teaspoons. All right, so those are the things we need to be able to know to convert four cups to teaspoons. So what we'll wanna do is we'll wanna start off with a measure that we actually have. So start off with four cups, okay? And then we'll wanna multiply by a conversion factor that's gonna convert cups. So if I've got cups right now, I'm gonna to need to cancel out cups. So I'm gonna definitely need to have cups on bottom. So the conversion factor we're gonna probably wanna use right now is the fact that one cups equals um, eight fluid ounces. So we'll do one cups, I could probably change that to just one cup, it's not plural, um, and then eight fluid ounces on bottom. So what'll happen is the cups are gonna cancel out now when I multiply four cups with a fraction of eight fluid ounces over one cup. And then we can just keep going now because basically, like right now, we're actually in four times eight is 32 over one, so 32 fluid ounces. 32 fluid ounces is still the same worth as four cups, but we wanna get to teaspoons. So we're just gonna keep going. And now what we have is we have fluid ounces that I'm gonna wanna cancel out. So if it's on top, I'm gonna write fluid ounces on the bottom. And then on top of that, we're gonna convert to tablespoons now and use the fact that one fluid ounce is the same as two tablespoons, and then I can cross out those labels of fluid ounces. All right, so great, now we're in tablespoons. One last step, we're gonna multiply by putting tablespoons on bottom, so those will cancel out, and we know that one tablespoon is the same thing as three teaspoons, beautiful. So the only unit we have left, right, is teaspoons. And then the math that we just need to do from right here is take four times eight times two times three, and then put that over one times one times one. So what is that gonna be? So four times eight is 32, 32 times two is 64, 64 times three is 192. So that's gonna give me 192 over one teaspoons which of course is just gonna be 192 teaspoons. All right, so you probably got a hang of what's going on right here. I'm just gonna do one more example here that um, gets us kind of involved with a little bit of metric and custom systems um, sorts of measurements here. So it just says that the average human adult weighs 62 kilograms. What would be this weight in tons? 
All right, so we know we're in kilograms. We need to figure out a way to get to tons. So let's refer to the uh, measures that I've given here. So we're dealing with how heavy stuff is. That's measures of mass. So right now we're in kilograms, and kilograms is in the metric system. So we can see, like, kilograms is here. But since we're trying to get to tons, tons is actually a measure in the custom system. Note that a metric ton and a ton, they're different from each other. Um, all right, so if I want to get from kilograms to tons, well, we know that one ton is 2,000 pounds, and then it also says right here that one kilogram is 2.205 pounds. So I think these two things that I've circled right here are the things that we can use, because that'll allow us to go from kilograms to pounds, and then from pounds to tons. So just a couple of steps, I guess, that we need to do to be able to perform this particular conversion. All right, so I'll go back to the problem and note down these particular conversions that um, we just referenced there. So what we know from looking that all up there is that one kilogram is about 2.205 pounds. And then it also told us that um, one ton is 2,000 pounds. Excellent. All right, so what we're trying to convert is 62 kilograms, so we'll start off in 62 kilograms. All right, and then we're going to multiply that by the fraction and, of course, put kilograms on bottom so we can cancel out the kilograms. So what we're going to want to do now is go between kilograms and pounds, and then I'll put 2.205 on top with the pounds and 1 kilogram on bottom. So that's going to cancel out our kilograms. And then finally, now that we're in pounds currently, we're going to want to cancel out pounds, multiply by another conversion fraction. Put pounds on bottom so we cancel those out. And then we're going to go between pounds and a ton. And one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. And then, yeah, so now we'll be in tons, which is what we want. So our math that we'll do is we're going to do 62 times 2.205 times 1. All right, so let me enter that into a calculator here. So that's going to give me 136.71 on top, and then 1 times 2,000 on bottom is 2,000. Um, and this is in tons, of course. And then if I simplify that, I just divide that, um, it comes out to be, I guess I can, the decimal stops here, I'll go all the way out here. So 0 0.068355. And it's not quite a full ton, so we would just use the singular word ton there.